quick little intro. Adam Brighouse, Toowoomba Regional Council, and I've been here on three years, but I've actually had 11 odd years in traffic and roadwork. Started on the stop slow that in and around all things Queensland, but today's very Australian, broad federal overview. A little bit about our Toowoomba Regional Council's OFSC journey to accreditation. We'll touch quickly on scope and responsibilities as it's outlined in the Australian standard. I've got some info there I want to talk to in the Austro's guide around generalist knowledge. And then we'll talk a bit about providing context and traffic management plans as well. Consulting and communication needs, record keeping and the feedback loop. Our journey from the TRC to address these criteria commenced in 2017. I'd like to thank Michael Courtney and uh, Aaron Bronkhurst, uh, Nick Coggins, who started that journey before I joined council in 2019. And when I got here, we had some fairly robust systems in place to address these items. Risk assessment is really key for us in, in that item one. Competency is really key there in, in, in H15, 2 and even 4. And so there's a bit of duplication and we can address these through our systems and our processes, making sure that it's implemented accurately and, and that's very nicely covered in part 6. So then that it's also regularly monitored. And the process around emergency procedures as well. But the Austro's Guide part 2, again in that TMP and the overarching how-to, but also in part 10, there's a nice little spot there in section five that might be familiar to some. But the other hazards as well, and I guess that's closing the loop and back to number one, what are those risks? So we've got excavation as an example, underground overhead works, you know, or a bridge and working at heights and a whole raft of different things. I'll talk to that a little bit later around contextualising the traffic management plan, but lots of things to consider in the risk assessment process. Some background, first in the way of scope. So the Australian standard was uh, amended recently in 2019. And it's that note too that, that you can see there I've underlined for you. I'm really keen just to provide context around this Australian standard is actually intended to be read with the Austroids Guide. That's why we're all talking so heavily about the Austroids Guide, Austroids Guide this and that. And that's kind of a part where it comes from in the legislation. The other item I want to highlight out of the Australian standard though, is really around this responsibility for safety at work sites. Section 1.4, previously 1.5, way back in 2009. And so the amendments I've highlighted there in bold, I've done this to highlight that this section is effectively unchanged in content. You can see 80% of this is unchanged. There's probably what I would call better detail in that remaining 20%. And I draw your attention to number three there. And the designer, the TMD, actually has a duty of care. This has been called out now in the Australian Standard. And we spoke about competencies earlier, Part 8, Section 6, and that's the TMD. Number four there as well, though, the TMI, the person has to implement that vision of the TMD, and they have to make sure they're doing that. So again, legislated there. And the last one, number seven, down the bottom of the page, any decision to vary, that's not just sound judgment, but the competent person. So again, competency, and this is where that sits in legislation. It leads into a, a, a nice little table here out of the Australia's Guide, part one. I like this table. Part one, level of knowledge. Who needs to know what? I said earlier around general knowledge. Uh, if we have a look at the columns there, TMI, uh, you can see there, part six, they're to take a leading role in that, or the traffic controller. In part seven, they're taking a leading role. But I said about the generalist knowledge and, and really everyone around the room is already familiar with this table, I'm sure, because it comes from part one and everyone in the room has that generalist knowledge. But what I did note is in the attendees list, there's actually quite a mix of individuals. And uh, in fact, quite a lot of you appear to fall into this category, the project manager or the contractor or the TM company. And I highlight this just to show that supporting role that you're all expected to help with those other TM professionals, particularly there though, part eight, and the lead role that you're expected to take in part eight. So part eight has a lot of detail there around roles and responsibilities, particularly here, this table five two, it gives some high level summaries of the different roles that you're all expected to take. And you can see there TMD, TMD non-practicing, so different examples, but road infrastructure managers have obligations all the way through to traffic management workers at the bottom of that table. And all of that's actually really well detailed in this part eight in the following tables, 5.3 to 5.13. 
So again, I would encourage you to go away and familiarise yourself with this particular part eight, because you're all leading this section. Part eight also calls out section six and all those training competencies. And just for the benefit of the group, as an aside and a little bit of an ad hoc add on here, uh, I'll just quickly pop in the PDF and show you. So part eight and the process procedures and section six and the TM training framework and all of those different competencies. And we can go to those sections and look at them. So we can around those road categories and different items there. Other items though in that part eight, right at the back of the book, Appendix B, there's these lovely example forms that have all been created to assist you. And one of the forms as an example is the daily diary. So we've contextualized that, we've given that a TRC brand. I'll talk to that in a little bit. The TMP as well. And the TMP is an integral, important, like the overarching document, right? Without it, it all kind of falls in a heap. But the TMP can't just be that cookie cutter. Those examples that were offered up were excellent, but we do need to contextualize them. And the Australia's Guide gives us some information around that. So how do we contextualize? Risk assess, right? Highest risk, risk activities, and we work through the process. Third bullet point there though, uh, last sentence is that the length and the complexity of that TMP though is proportionate to the level of risk associated with the work. And I've also dropped in the bottom of the slide there, just how we're addressing those federal safety criteria, right? And this might be a way to address that item for you. So the TMP is scalable. And what we've done in that part two, we've taken out Appendix A and the TMP checklist. I've just dropped a slight image of that there. We've turned that into our own sort of assessment tool, a checklist of our own that we use to assess sites and conduct the risk assessment process. And so here's our traffic management planning tool. And it's got one tool in the whole toolkit, a suite of documents that we've got, our overarching work procedure, right? Our risk assessment templates, project specific, or a day-to-day -day activity, or in this case, you know, the two-pager, the SWIMs, the SOPs, right? We've got signage records for long-term and short-term. We've got audits and a suite of different documents there around compliance inspections versus full TMP audits. We've got site suitable risk assessment forms as well, which come out of the part eight, section three. So again, knowing you're all leading in that part eight, you're all familiar with that site suitable risk assessment for the generic suite of TGSs, right? So we've got about 150 TGSs that cover the static, the mobile and the short term low impact. So those parts three, four and five. And then we use our other systems to support and enforce that. So you'll notice there again, at the bottom of the page, I've called in that OFSC criteria that we're addressing, how we're identifying, assessing and controlling risks. And again, this coming from that contextualizing concept at the start of that part two. The TMP itself is actually a communication device and communication and consultation is key. It's a important. Signs are a method. They're a communication device, as is the TMP and the words. But you've got in the field radio and comps, but without effective communication, the whole thing falls on a head. I've bolded there as well the role of the road infrastructure manager and you as that TM professional PTM professional and the communication with road infrastructure managers, residents, other stakeholders and the like. I've just dropped a snip in there as well. Out of our TMP template, how we're addressing, you know, that pre-approval that would be being sought. I highlight it as a pre-approval because further on in part two, it talks about an approval process, but we've tried to approach that from a being proactive getting in front of it and a pre-approval being sought, as opposed to building the TMP, doing the risk assessments, asking for that road closure and then getting knocked back. Well, we're looking at that as a pre-approval and going, okay, look, here's our conversation and how are we addressing that and capturing that in the TMP. So again, at the bottom, you're seeing there how we're addressing that particular item around, it's approved by the relevant authority prior to, but we're addressing other criteria there as well. Part six. For me, I like the element uh, of section 7.5 there uh, around record keeping. There's a lot of detail here, and I've mentioned that earlier in the Australian Standard. It's unchanged, but better detailed, more fleshed out. I'm not going to go into each of those items, but what I'd like to point you to is that first sentence. These records and this evidence for our OFSC accreditation needed to be detailed enough so that we could recreate at any point in the future. And this is where we're drawing that from that. 
to be able to address the H15. And it's not just the monitoring for the vandalism and the tampering, but you know, for reviewing for accuracy, right? This all feeds into that. This section, and in fact, all of that section seven in part six, is your day-to-day, -day, the after hours, the monitoring inspection, quite logically sits between the section six implementation, section eight removal. And so you can see, you're starting to see, I hope, how that logically flows and the parts feed in and flow. So the part two TMP through to we're at six and process and implementation. And then later we talked about the part 10 and supporting guidance. If it's not documented, it didn't happen. Our records really need to be um, key as part of that communication process. While we're talking feedback, I'd actually like this part of part one. So again, everyone in the room had that generalist knowledge of part one, and you would all be familiar with Appendix A and the fact that feedback is being sought by Austro's pre-2019, while this was all being developed. And even post-publication, they are still even now open to and receptive of feedback. In fact, at a recent webinar by Austro's, their project lead, Chris Kay, was talking about the innovative TTM devices and was talking about this Austrad's guide and said that this is not a static document, it's a live living thing. So if you have feedback, if items aren't working for you, please use the web address, send feedback in, right? Have those conversations because it's communication and conversation that's going to get this Austrad's guide harmonized. I suppose I'd like to use this image just as an idea for you and your mind, we are trying to come together in a national approach. This is a very lofty ideal. You've got state and territories that have got nuanced acceptance of this Austroads guide, but we're really looking at a harmonised approach. And for me, what does that look like? It's all of us in this room and around Australia working together. So with that, just a quick thank you to the team here at TRC. I mentioned Michael and Aaron before, but all of those TMDs and managers that have supported systems development process, but our TMIs and TCs in the field and on the ground implementing the vision of TTM from TRC's perspective, this regional council in Queensland that is, I think, leading way and punching well above its weight class.